Hello friends, this video on applications of biotechnology part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The next test is ELISA test. Now as I said, this is a diagnostic test for early detection of HIV. Because as we all know, HIV, however, AIDS do not have a complete cure as of now. But if it is detected at a very early stage, then at least the longevity of the patient can be increased a bit. Because you can give the patient some an some antiretroviral drugs so that uh, the symptoms of the disease can at least be uh, reduced. So this test is for AIDS, which is acquired immune deficiency syndrome. So this disease, what this disease mainly attacks the immune system of the body. So it, it tries to spoil the immune system of the body. And once the immune system is spoiled, your body doesn't have any protection of its own. So even a small infection can actually become fatal and it can kill the person. So that's how AIDS, I mean, that, that, that was all about AIDS. So the pathogen which causes AIDS is HIV, which is human immunodeficiency virus. Now, it, it, if we talk about early detection, we actually need to detect if even if extremely small concentration of this HIV virus is present inside the body of that person. So how can we detect that small concentration of this virus? So for that thing, this ELISA test has been designed. So this test is based on the principle of antigen-antibody interaction. Now, what is antigen and what is antibody? So we have discussed this in one of our previous lessons, but still we will have a quick recap so that uh, you can understand the concept of ELISA test. So first, let us talk about antigens. So antigen refers to any foreign substance inside the body. So when I say any foreign substance, this substance could be anything. It could be any sort of chemicals. It could be microorganisms like bacteria or virus. It could be any toxin in the form of radiation or anything. It could be pollen which, can, which act as allergens and can cause allergies. So antigen could be just any foreign substance which enters our body. So they are termed as antigen. So anti, what do they do? So whenever any foreign substance enters inside our body, it triggers the immune system because the immune system is the is uh, it is like the soldier of our body. So it tries to protect our body from any foreign attack. So the immune system will wake up and it will start producing antibodies. So these antibodies are produced against antigen. So it is something like this: when our enemies, for example, when our enemies attack our country, what happens? The entire army, the entire air force, they trigger a, a response and they start sending the army out to fight. They start sending the air force out to fight right? in a very similar way. Here also antigen is the foreign substance that is the enemy which has entered inside the body. As soon as it enters, the immune system sends a signal and it starts producing antibodies. So these antibodies are against the antigen. So the antibodies are supposed to fight the antigens and protect our body. So that is the concept of antigen and antibody. So let us now quickly look at antibody in little more detail. Now these antibodies are nothing but they are protein structures. So they are proteins which are uh, of Y shaped. So this is how an antibody looks like. So here you see these are the different antigens and for each specific antigen, there is a specific antibody. So one particular antibody can spoil or can destro destroy a particular type of antigen. So the antigen antibody interaction is very specific. So here you can see it is a Y shaped structure, the entire antibody. So it can recognize and neutralize the pathogen. So it can easily recognize the antigens and it can neutralize their bad effects. So each antibody binds to a specific antigen. So if you look at the structure of antibody, you see there is an antigen binding site here. So now each antibody will have a specific site to which only specific antigens can bind. So here you can see different antigens will have different shapes and structures. So each of them will have a corresponding antibody to which they can bind. So the way you would have seen the enzyme substrate binds. 
So the enzyme will have a specific shape and the corresponding shape will be present in a specific substrate. So when they two, both of them meet, they form enzyme substrate complex. So here also the sim similar thing happens. So every antibody will have an antigen binding site to which only specific antigens can bind. Now if you look at the structure of the antibody molecule in little more detail, it has a Y-shaped structure with four peptide chains two light chains and two heavy chains. So here you can see this is a light chain. This is also a light chain. This one is a heavy chain. This one is also a heavy chain. So there are two light peptide chains and two heavy peptide chains. Generally an antibody is represented as H2L2 because there are two heavy chains and two light chains. So that is why the representation is H2L2. Some of the examples of antibodies are IgA, IgM, IgG and IgE. So you see they can exist as a monomer, they can exist as a trimer, they can exist as a pentamer. So here you can see this is a pentamer where you have one, two, three, four, five antibodies. So here you see this is a dimer where you have two antibodies. So this is a monomer where you have just one antibody. So there are different types of antibodies and all of them have different structures. So basically antigens are the foreign substance and antibodies are those proteins which are uh, produced by the immune system to fight against the antigen and each particular antigen will bind to a specific antibody. So that's about antigen and antibody. So now that we already saw the antigen antibody interaction, let us try to understand how exactly this test helped to diagnose AIDS. So recombinant HIV protein is used to test the presence of antibodies produced in the body in response to HIV infection. Now HIV is called, this AIDS is caused due to HIV virus. Now as soon as this HIV virus enters inside our body, so this is a foreign matter. So this is like an antigen. So in response to this antigen, our immune system will produce antibodies. So now if there is an HIV virus present inside the body, then the antibodies against those viruses should also be present. Now, in this test, these antibodies are tested for its presence. So what we do in this test is we try to find out if the antibodies corresponding to HIV is present inside the body or not. So how do we detect the presence of antibodies by making use of recombinant HIV protein? So what do we do here is antigens from a sample attached antigens from sample attached to a surface. So you, we take a surface where we attach the antigens from the sample taken from a patient's blood. So specific antibody when applied over the same surface should bind to the antigen because if that antibody is for this particular antigen then both should bind. So what is done? Antibody is applied to the same surface. So on the same surface you first give put the antigens and then you apply the antibody. Now, what should happen if this antibody and this antigen, if they are for each other? So if this is the antigen which is specific for this particular antibody, then both will bind with each other and as a result, a complex will be formed. So the antibody will bind to the antigen. So this is the scenario when the antibody which you have applied, that is also for the HIV infection the antigen is also for the presence of HIV virus so if that is present so antibody will bind with the antigen as a result what will happen now we want to have some mechanism which should show that yes the antibody and the antigen have bound together so for that purpose we make use of enzymes what we do is we link the antibody with an enzyme and we link that enzyme with a substrate. So what will happen is as soon as the antibody, so let us suppose if this is just an example, let us suppose this is antigen and this is antibody. So now as soon as they both come together, they both will combine together. Now how do we know that they both have combined? For that purpose, we attach an enzyme here. So this enzyme is attached with the antibody and we also give a substrate here. So now if the antibody attaches with the anti antigen, so the enzyme also attaches to the entire complex. Now the enzyme will also attach to the substrate. So what will happen? The entire complex will be formed, which will have antigen, antibody, enzyme at the substrate. Now when this reaction takes place, there is a change in color of the surface where this entire reaction is taking place. And that color change will indicate the presence of the antigen. 
now the enzyme substrate will also be added now as soon as the enzyme and the substrate combine together this reaction will produce a detectable signal a detectable signal means some change which will help us to detect things so a color change will be seen in the substrate and this change in color in the substrate indicates that there was an antigen present that is the antigen antibody has combined together so with this concept the elisa test is a success in determining or in detecting aids at a very early stage thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again